you have a private yacht to escape to, this pandemic has been excruciating for just about everyone. It's too early to know which generations will be most injured by this. That'll take years to sort out. But one thing we do know is that the one-two punch of the Great Recession followed by COVID-19 in the span of just 11 years is an economic challenge different from anything we've seen before. And as fate would have it, the timing is uniquely bad for my age group. Millennials have... All right, so he's talking about, you know, the... Um... The recession in 2008, followed by the pandemic in 2020, it started. Um, he's saying that that he calls that a one-two punch. And he's basically saying that that, you know, has been catastrophically bad for the millennial age group. Have lower rates of employment overall. They have. Um, lower earnings, lower savings, and then layered on top of that, they have debt, which of course was is deeply related to that lower employment um, and lower earnings that they carry with them over time. And they're carrying all of that into this particular economic crisis. The ethos of America is upward mobility. The American dream is built on the promise that the American dream is dead, man. Each generation builds upon the previous one and quality of life improves steadily. For as far back as U.S. Census data goes, that's been true. Household wages have risen relative to previous generations. That is, until Gen X handed the baton to us. Across the education spectrum, we're earning less than the previous generation. You see that? Look at that. Gen X is earning more. Now this says median adjusted household income for households headed by 25 to 37 year olds. Okay, so 25 to 37. When they say adjusted household income, how do they really adjust? How do they get to those figures? Because I would say that, you know, it's actually worse than what those statistics show. But of course, I can't really um, prove that. But you can see that they're earning less, man. But why? We're the most diverse most educated, most productive generation in American history. You know, being more educated doesn't really mean, because what, they, what we have now, we have more degrees now. And a lot of these degrees, what do they call them? Mickey Mouse degrees. They're not really worth anything. So just because you're more educated doesn't mean you're educated in something that's actually valuable. Obtaining a degree does not mean that you are educated or qualified in a field where there are, uh, you know, an excess of jobs. But from an economic standpoint, we could not have been dealt the worst hand. Okay. Twice. And as I learned from the experts, it all has to do with timing. When a recession happens, the, um, the impacts are often uneven. These cohorts who are coming of age during economic downturn. Sociologists. Um, Always women, aren't they? Experience. Um, really, really strong um, negative economic impacts. They come out to um, a very difficult labor market and it's hard to get a good first job. Um, it may be hard to get a job at all, but if they do get a job, they're likely to get a job that's maybe lower pay and lower quality than the job that they would have gotten had they graduated a bit earlier. In 2008, nine or 10, I think most of us were pretty happy to have a lousy first job, just so long as we had one. What I didn't realize at the time, though, is that that first job has major impacts that ripple out across your entire career. It is true that- Okay, this is important. Listen to this. That the trajectory um, of your economic future, um, and in some ways your, your life is altered permanently on average. The first job that you get sets you up for the second job, which sets you up for the third job, right? And so where you start in that career trajectory really matters. I checked. You know, where, where you start is really, is really where you finish, man. And this is what a lot of people need to understand, that when you leave university, if you're struggling to find work when you leave university, you know, you're going to struggle for the rest of your life. And, and that is the, 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 the real uh, truth. That's a real bitter pill to swallow. But that is the actual truth. You will struggle for the rest of your life in the workforce if you're struggling when you leave university to find a job, man. You know, because the people who are going to do well in the job market 
are those who are going to waltz into a graduate job. There are people who finish their university degree and they waltz into a graduate job. They're earning, you know, twenty seven, twenty nine thousand pounds a year. And, you know, I mean, I remember when I left university, you know, I couldn't get any graduate jobs. I went down. I kept going down. You know, I was looking at sixteen, eighteen thousand pound a year jobs, and I was getting rejected. I was getting rejected by low tier jobs. That's why I said, you know what? Yeah, I just gave up and I and I said, you know, I'm going into business, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own business because I knew that it was over for me. In my early twenties, it was already over for me. Yeah, if I kept applying, I could have got, you know, a low income job, but. I would have been lagging behind. And that's the thing, you know, it, it relates back to what, what St. Adrian was saying, that in those early years, man, that's what really going to define you. How you start is how you finish. Of course, there are some exceptions. But the first job that you take, if you're going to take a, for your first job out of, when you finish university and you're earning under 20000 you know, you're pretty much finished. You're never going to be a high earner. You're always going to be a low earner. You're always going to struggle for the most part. So this is very important. You guys need to understand that. I checked in with half a dozen or so of my fellow millennials. Some I knew, some I didn't. And their experiences bore that out across the board. I either had to prepare myself for like a long stretch of not being able to work when I graduated 2010 or, you know, just trying to scrap for anything possible at that point. There were no jobs, and I remember being friends with Fashion seniors industry. who were getting ready to graduate. They were panicked that they couldn't find jobs. Uh, and so they either had to work for free or work in a different Working industry. Working for free. And, and the same thing happened to me when I finally finished college in 2010. The legal market just completely blew up. It went from, you know, jobs yeah. everywhere. At, at you know, this guy looks like he's earning 150, 100, 180,000 pounds a year, I mean, or dollars a year. I mean, this guy, he don't look like he's struggling. Like when you look at this guy, you don't think this guy's struggling. He, he looks like a guy who's earning well. I pay to, there aren't any jobs. Seasoned attorneys don't have work. New attorneys can't get work. And it was just chaos. That was the first time that I ever remember battling. No, this guy, that's another matter. This guy looks like he's struggling. Man. Something that sounded like depression or anxiety. Um, yeah, you, you can tell, man. I was 30 pounds heavier than I am now and had high blood pressure at the age of 27. Wow. I remember the, the mental and the physical toll that it took was pretty profound. Compared to Gen X, twice as many... So uh, this is referring to mid-age millennials. And uh, you can divide millennials into like basically three categories, I guess. The 25 to 30, 30 to 35, and then... 35 to 40 i guess but these are in the 30 to 35 category the mid-age millennials then you've got the old millennials who are 35 plus and then you've got you know the the youngest millennials which are basically late 20s millennials took on student debt to go to college or grad school and for those who took on debt on average it was 50 percent more than gen xers it also doesn't help that college was dramatically more expensive for us 20 grand, I thought it was way more than that. About twice as much. For many of us, our starting salaries were lower than what you'd normally expect. Look at that. Millennials earn 20% less than baby boomers. 20%, that's a, that's a, hell, of a hell of a gap. Did at the same age. We can't buy a house. Mm -hmm. We're less able to save for a rainy day. We hesitated. Uh, to you know, a lot of you millennials are finished. And, and let me know in the comment section if you want more content specifically uh, on millennials. Um, I know a lot of you guys are Gen Zers. Um, Gen Zers are even worse. Let me t <laughs> let me tell you that. But if you want more content in millennials, let me know in the comment section. I mean, to get married or have kids. In 1965, the typical American first married around 22 years of age. By 2017, it was closer to 28. In 1972, the average age of first-time parents was about 24 years old. Now it's 28. Everything's and a half. going up delayed. Everything was delayed at best. Oh, I'm getting ads, man. The worst. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, about 7:30 a.m. Sorry about this. I should have played this through. 
they're, they're not making more than their parents. That speaks directly to the so-called American dream, the idea that each generation should do better than, than the one preceding it. So you should do better, but let me tell you something. If you can't beat your parents, man, I mean, you know, assuming that you come from a lower middle class or lower working class, if you can't beat your parents, man, there's something wrong with you. Like you can talk about all these excuses, all that and this, but you got to be able to beat your parents, man. Like there's something wrong with you. There's something seriously wrong with you. You can't beat your parents. I think I think most people are still beating their parents. I'm not talking about people who got you know, like upper middle class or the middle middle class. I consider myself lower middle class or how I grew up anyway. If you're lower middle class, working class, you can't beat your parents. There's something wrong with you. You know, it's not that hard to beat your parents, man. It really isn't. They compare themselves to their parents, which is a very, very salient comparison. Uh, they're they're, they're going to fall short more frequently than had before been the case. They've been left in a situation where they're sort of being held responsible as though their actions are what caused the circumstances in which... Of course your actions have a role to play. What are you talking about? Of course your actions have a role to play. You know, when I changed my actions, my, incomes, my income went up dramatically. When I stopped playing video games and I started working long hours, my income increased dramatically. You know, don't tell me your actions ain't making no difference. You know, we have a big problem with millennials. Millennials are a generation where adults, mid-30s, are playing huge amounts of video games. Boomers weren't doing that. You know, and video games did exist back then. You know, they may not have been as graphically enhanced, it, but they existed in the back then. You know, when the boomers were in their thirties, there were video games. You know, there were video games, man. Video games have been around for, for for over forty years now. You know, or maybe even fifty. So, but that's the thing. Animes. We got we got th guys in their thirties watching anime, bro. Like that's a problem. Like let's not act as if millennials are, you know, focused, hyper focused on getting somewhere in life a lot of these guys are doomers man a lot of these guys are giving up on life but yet we want to sit there and act like everybody's working so hard and it's just the external factors are too much too much come on now we're living in first world countries we're not living in africa man but let's not be stupid here they find themselves when in fact it was actually um, decisions that were made at a much higher level so we because got you're giving excuses for people to be failure and i hate i hate if there's one thing i hate more than anything it's excuses excuses for your lack of success in life i won't tolerate it on this channel you know i won't tolerate it a crappy hand our timing was monumentally yeah you were dealt a bad hand and you played it the worst possible way unlucky and there was very little we could do about it for most of us there were things you can do about it there's always things you can do about it but see when you get that degree that degree is like a you know it's an entitlement a lot of people when they get that degree they feel entitled to work in that field and that's part of the problem what, what with these degrees these degrees can be a big hindrance to people because you have this like this chip on your shoulder and you, you feel like you know i need i deserve a job in that field you know and that's the problem with a lot of degree educated people they feel like i need right i need and i deserve a job in that field and i'm not gonna um i'm not gonna basically deviate from that and that's part of the problem because if you're not going to get a job in that field what are you going to do i didn't let my degree hold me back i i accepted this degree is worthless man and that's what a lot of people need to do like if you're in your early 20s and you got your degree and you're struggling just say this degree is worthless man and just start fresh you're better off doing that than ending up like 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 say andrian because that's what I know. I, I don't know what St. Andrew did, but I can tell that's what he did, man. I can tell. You get these degrees and you feel all high and mighty and you feel like, yeah, yeah. But the reality is these degrees, a lot of the time, they're worthless. 
a lot of the time the best thing you can do with these degrees is just go and teach English in another country. And that's not what a lot of people want to do with their degrees, but a lot of the time that's all that garbage is worth. And sometimes you have to accept reality and a lot of millennials are just running away from the reality. That degree that you spent years obtaining, I'm sorry, but it's worthless. It's worthless, man. Us, this completely changed our mindset and outlook for the future. Individuals like millennials who come of age during economic downturns are more pessimistic about the economy. They're doomers, man. L L L you say pessimistic, I call them what they are. They're doomers. They're given up on life. That's why they're watching anime and playing video games. They're given up. They have no hope. But they're also they're defeated. More pessimistic about their um, their future. Yes. Their chances of success. Their the likelihood that they will be happy in their old age, or the likelihood that they will retire comfortably. Do you feel like this country and our economic policies work for you? Do you feel like you're set up for success in the modern economy in America? If you were to ask me a couple months ago, I would say fairly yes. Um, but now uh, I, I don't. I don't think so. Those two events, the relatively you know, this is what they're teaching people. They're teaching people that the recession and you know and the pandemic, which is going to lead to a great depression, you know, is the reason why they're in the position that they're in. Okay, and and with this great depression that's coming, people are just gonna have more victim, 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 and that's why UBI is a certainty. Even Elon Musk said recently, UBI is a certainty. It's coming with automation, and I'm gonna talk about automation. That might be my next video, but um, they're just using these as an excuse. I mean, I'm younger than these guys, and I've set myself up. Yes, I'm leaving the country, but ultimately. Even if I wanted to make it here, I can make it in this country as well. It's just it's going to take me longer. I can make it in this country. But let's not make excuses now. You know, these are well-educated people, but it's the mentality. I've told you guys for, for years, it's the mentality of people. People got messed up mentality, man. That's why they don't succeed. It's not because they're dumb. These are smart people academically, but, you know, they just got a messed up mentality. Proximity and time between the two has shaken a lot of confidence that I have in the fundamentals of our system. I just felt really betrayed by the system, even though I was like complying to what is to be I mean, like, this woman is defeated, the system. Man. These feelings of angst and insecurity translates to us taking fewer it's risks. It's all about feelings. It's all about feelings, feelings, feelings. I told you guys, you guys are too invested in your feelings, man. Stop talking about you feel this, you feel that. Just go out and do it, man. Stop saying I'm scared to take a risk, scared to take a risk. Don't be scared to take a risk. I never regretted any business that I started. Even dropshipping, when I was dropshipping, I still made money. You know, it didn't last. But I still made money and I still learned that dropshipping is garbage. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, you they always say in life, you regret the things that you don't do as opposed to what you do. And that's true. I mean, you know, look at that fat guy. I'm not going to mention his name, but that fat guy, you know, who actually lost weight now. But that guy who, who didn't do that Oracle internship. Some of you guys might know who I'm talking about. He had an Oracle internship and, and chose to go and work in the library. And he's still there. <laughs> he's still there today, working in the library. He, he's living life with regrets. So don't be like these guys. Oh, I'm scared to take a risk. Oh, the economy. Don't worry about that. Just do it, man. Just do it, man, because at the end of the day, more than likely, you're not going to regret it. Less likely to start a business, more hesitant to buy a house. Stop or have... making excuses. This man is sickening, man. You know, this video is really getting on my nerves. Stop making excuses, man. You know, what is this nonsense that you're teaching to people? And you think millennials are bad? The Gen Z is even worse. And that's how you know this Western society is finished. It's done. The people in it are just... I mean, this victim mentality, I'm sick of hearing it, man. You guys are acting like you have to work 16 hours a day in the hot sun, digging ditches or something. Like, you guys act like you're sick of this crap. Kids, the normal things that power the American economy. 
And it's become all but this a guy is crying, so man. Look at his months. eyes. And that was before COVID landed the second of the one two punch. Merely a decade later, um, as many of these folks are getting back onto their feet and getting back onto a career you know, trajectory. How, that how are you just getting back onto your feet? Like, how does it take you 10 years to get back on your feet? Have you been in a coma? Have you been in jail? <laughs> You know, they forget. I mean, I, I say that the the last decade was one of the greatest decades. I mean, the last decade was one of the greatest decades to make money. I don't care what anyone says. That was a decade of prosperity. If you're hoping that the next decade is going to be one for you, well, I, I'm sorry, but you missed out your best opportunity. And I'm saying that to the mid-age millennials, these 35 and 40, you know, 33-year-old people and older you missed out your best opportunity probably in your life to make things happen. I'm sorry, but the last decade was not one, uh, you know, it was one of prosperity. I don't care what anyone says. A lot of people made a lot of money in the last decade, you know, in a various amount of different things. We don't have time to list them, but the reality of the situation is people made money in the last decade. And for you to sit there and act like the last decade was just... It was just a time of recovery from the recession and that nobody could do anything. It's just sickening. It's sickening to hear this stuff. It's not right because you're putting these ideas into the minds of people and destroying them, defeating them and teaching them to be victims. Maybe they expected to be on five years ago. They're getting hit again. And that sort of one-two punch, I think, is, um, is something that we've never experienced before um, and that is likely to have pretty devastating economic impacts um, for this for this generation. The stability that I was like fighting to get, like I did finally get when I turned 30, like the week I turned 30. And when the pandemic happens for it to stop and be stalled, that is pretty traumatic. You know, I, I, I don't know where to go from here. It's always been a big punch in the face every couple of years. Hillary lost her job and said she's still waiting on unemployment checks. Eric contracted COVID-19 and after 10 days fighting it, recovered, went back to work and was laid off a couple days later. This roller coaster ah. keeps going up, you know. Look, uh, he's crying, When's man. it gonna come down? Is it gonna come down? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of these millennials have lost their masculinity, man. That's another thing. You know, we've lost our masculinity and when you lose your masculinity, you can't fight. You, 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 start, you start listening to this propaganda and you start becoming weak. You start, you start becoming defeated. You know, that's why needs exist. Needs have zero masculine. I mean, these guys are better than needs because needs are not even trying. They have zero masculinity. You know, these people are like, you know, they've completely lost any element of masculinity. And guys like this guy who's crying, he's losing his masculinity. He's losing it because, you know, he's embracing the victim mentality. Instead of just, you know, Standing up and saying, you know what, I've got to just keep fighting. I've just got to keep fighting. I've just got to do whatever it takes. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to regret it. Hard work. People say, oh, hard work. You know, hard work is everything, man. I've got to talk more about hard work because I've got to drill it into the minds of the people. Just work your ass off and make sure you do what you have to do to get yourself out of the position that you're in. But stop believing that. You were, put, you know, you were put in these positions, and you're a victim, because at the end of the day, our life is primarily, okay, primarily decided by the choices and decisions that we have made ourselves. I'm not saying external factors don't play a role, but that's not the primary thing. I don't care what anyone says. You know, people can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, you're just running away from reality. And now it's like, all right, it came down, it came down hard. Brooks is on a one-year contract as a professor for next year. Okay. But with steep cuts likely to hit higher education, long-term job security is no guarantee. There's no job security. Just get that out of your mind. Job security does not exist in this current era. It's done. Robbie was scarred enough from the Great Recession that he chose a completely different area of law to practice, specifically so he could weather a recession. I that's, still haven't that's recovered not a bad from idea. 2008. And I, I'm kind of lost. You know, you're going back to 2008. 
to justify your situation in 2021. <laughs> Oh my god, like, I'm sorry, I just can't support this. I, I just can't support this, you know? Like, how mu how much longer? I mean, this this Great Depression that's coming, people are going to be talking about this, you know, when, when I'm old and grey, people are still going to be talking about it, like, as an excuse, like, you know, it's, I've just had enough, man, I've, I've had enough. So where I'm at now... When I asked my larger friend group about plans for getting married, buying a house, or having a kid, many of them straight up laughed at me. When I... A lot of people can buy a house if they go out to the, you know, cheaper areas, but a lot of people don't want to do that. Let's be honest. I mean, I can buy a house easily if I go to a cheaper area. I'm living in the most expensive region in the country. Like, you have cheaper houses around, but, you know, buying a house is not necessarily... You know, it doesn't really mean anything, you know, if you're just buying a cheap house. But it's still a lot of these people who are homeowners, they're not really owning expensive properties or, you know, they're owning very cheap properties. When I asked about their outlook for the future, almost none of them were outright optimistic. This is partly why Medicare for All, canceling student loan debt, and other... Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's the solution, right? Big structural changes proposed by politicians like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and AOC... Oh my God! Here's your next president. Well, not your next, but your future president. Look, look, look at that face. That's your future president of the U.S. <laughs> and it's true because that's the only direction that we're going to head in. Because millennials believe in it, Gen Zers believe in it. So the Gen Xs and the Boomers are dying off. So it's the only realistic way that the AOCs and the like will become president resonate with young folks across the country. They're the ones who the system doesn't seem to be working for. Those who haven't fared well under the existing set of arrangements tend to blame themselves. That's part of the American sort of self-reliance ethic. I think there has been a change in that sensibility and a greater recognition that some of the problems that this generation has been experiencing uh, are not due to individual all I ever wanted was a white picket fence. You know what? You know what? It's still attainable. It's still attainable. Like, you know, but people just want to work 40 hours a week. This is part of the problem. Like, people have this kind of mindset that you can just do the same thing that was done 20, 30, 40 years ago and get the same results. No. You have to do different things. You have to get with the times. You know? You're going to have to have your eggs in many baskets. Most of these guys complaining don't even have a side hustle. You can't work 40 hours a week anymore, guys. Thinking, oh, I'm just going to get a 40 hour a week job and that should be enough. Oh, I'm not earning enough. And most socialists do not work more than 40 hours a week. You know, they want to drink, they want to smoke, they want to party. It's like, you know, why? Is that, you know, is that, so, so if that's more important to you than work, then why do you deserve, you know, all these things that you want? Like, is, is this entitlement complex? If you prefer smoking and drinking and partying over working on the weekends, then be poor. Well, you know, what, what, like, is these people ain't working 80 to 100 hours a week. And if they were, they wouldn't be complaining. You know, they wouldn't be complaining, man. You may have to do things differently. You may have to start an e-commerce business. You know, like I have. You may have to do that if you want to move up in a food chain. I would not be able to make the money that I'm making now with a job. Like I said before, my job prospects were, were crap. But I decided that I'm going to have to do what I have to do. And it's worked out for me. So at the end of the day, these people have an entitlement complex, man. That's really what it comes down to. They don't understand the modern world and they think that, oh, the boomers had it easy. No, the boomers didn't necessarily have it easy. The boomers didn't have any internet. The boomers had to, when you think about it, the boomers had it worse. I wouldn't want to go back to those days because I got my knowledge from the internet. I didn't get my information from some person I met on the streets or, you know, like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 
you know, got it from some friend's father or something. I got my information from the internet. So where would I be without the internet? I'll be nowhere. I don't want to go back to the boomer system. I don't want to go back to the boomer days. The internet is out there, but you're using the internet to do what? You look at Reddit, you know, hard left crap like Reddit and Twitter and, and all this stuff you guys look at. You know, uh, looking at, you know, uh, anime, watching anime on these on these websites on Netflix. That's why you're poor. You know? <laughs> That's why you're poor, man. You know, you're not watching the right people on the Internet. You're not using the resources correctly. But you want to complain, oh, they had it easy, they had it easy. No, not necessarily. It's, how, it's all about how you frame it. I think I had it easy than them because I, I had the internet and they didn't. So, you know, it depends. I mean, failings, but rather to systemic ones. The individuals who experience economic downturns during their impressionable years are more likely to believe that economic success is the result of luck rather than hard work. Uh, yeah, luck. Yeah, luck. I mean, what kind of nonsense? I mean, this is some of the nonsense that I know some of you guys believe. One guy in particular believes this. Right. I mean, you know, this is absolute nonsense. Luck. Luck. Yeah, your economic success is the same as rolling a dice, right? I mean, come on now. You know, this is up. I mean, who, who can, if you think that you're dumb, I mean, you're Duma. Either you're dumb or you're a Duma. Either way, you're screwed. Like, the, the, a lot of you guys are in the position because of your beliefs. Your beliefs are vile. You have disgusting, vile beliefs that put you in a position that you're in. And yet you sit there and act like, you know, it's acceptable. No, it's unacceptable. Problems are reaching such a level that it's hard to see yourself as the only person who chose your way into a particular situation because it's the same situation in which you see your friends and your relatives. All right, so that's a video, guys. Um, I just want to have a look at some of these comments. So let's have a look at some of these comments. So uh, here, yeah, millennials are the equivalent. I forget about that. Uh, perhaps the most life-damaging thing. Let me zoom this in a little bit. Let's go to 150. Perhaps the most life-damaging thing that happened to millennials was that was the any degree is a good degree narrative. Yeah, man. I mean, any degree is a good degree. A lot of these degrees are useless. This hit me to the core. I'm a millennial and was sold the American dream. Go to college, work hard, and you'll live a comfortable life. Well, they don't tell you that, you know, going to college and working hard doesn't mean you're going to even get a job, in a, you know, anyway. I worked hard in high school to get into a good college. I worked two jobs to get a bachelor's in economics. Then I kept working hard at demanding full-time job while I got my MBA. I worked hard every effing day to only see unqualified people move up because they kissed ass, slept with management. What? He said slept with management. That is crazy. Or knew that the right people through family members. The fact that I'm a minority also hurt me. I work for... Well, I'm not going to read all this, man. This is a long comment. Let's see if there's any juicy bits. Uh... I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford a house. I will have to move an hour or more outside the city to find a decent home. Basically live in rural America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making excuses, man. Okay. Uh... Yeah, this guy say, this guy say frustration. Okay, okay, let me read this. Ten years later... I'm at the same job level, however, with a ton of experience. When I ask for a higher salary, I'm turned down. Frustrations does not begin to explain how I feel. I am angry. I have hundreds, I have no, sorry, I have thousands of dollars in student loans and make peanuts compared to where I should be, underachiever. I, have, I haven't been able to buy a house in the housing market that skyrocketed during the pandemic. I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford a house. That's true. I've, I've, I've seen those uh, um, statistics as well. It's a vicious cycle that never ends. Yeah, I mean, well, you're stuck in the rat race. You're stuck in a rat race, man. You know, you're going to have to leave this country. And that's my advice for people like this rock solid 1023. 
you're stuck in a rat race. You're never going to come out of the rat race. You know, you're never going to come out of the rat race, but you're single. You're single, you know, you got no kids, you don't own a home, that's fine. Live on the breadline, man. Forget about uh, finding girls, dating, I don't know what you're doing, but live on the breadline, work your ass off, start an online business, and then get ready to expatriate, man. That's what you need to do. But, but look, these people don't give any advice. I'm there with you. I hear you. I love you, man. Stay strong. Like, is this what they're trying? Like, you know, this guy say, I just want to burn it all. Like, these guys are going, you know, look at this, man. These are the people who joined Antifa March. You know, I mean, look at this. You know, people are defeated, man. Like, they don't give any advice. I hear you. I'm there for you. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> is that going to help? You know, I think. Let's see if there's any other comments. You know. This person says, my parents had three kids in a home they owned. My mom worked part time as a cashier and my dad worked odd jobs. My partner is a veteran and I am an IT. What? A veteran and an IT. What does that mean? While I own a childcare business, we are stuck in a rundown apartment. Wow. And my dream of being a young mother turned into fear of never being able to be a mother. These people are living messed up lives, man. You know, a lot of people living messed up lives. As an early Gen Z, growing up watching millennials get screwed over is such a motivation booster. Now we're up to the batting plate. Can't wait to get nailed. I see a lot of these comments by Gen, Gen Z as I've already given up on life. You know, they give up. They know it's. They know they're finished. They can't compete. So this world, so this Western society is finished because, you know, you can see the next generation coming through have no fight. I mean, they don't even know what gender they are. How are they going to fight? I mean, anyways, man, that's it. It's Unreal Man here, the truth of Manosphere. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. And make sure to hit the notification bell so you're informed every time I upload a new video.